This is a case study where we used electrical resistivity, which is a type of surface geophysics to map a uh, shallow sand unit across an undeveloped piece of land. The project was located in Harnett County, North Carolina, and the client had inherited approximately 230 acres of land that he was interested in uh, using to mine sand. And so we proposed to map the site where we could with electrical resistivity. Our approach was to use electrical resistivity to uh, map the sand unit thickness and lateral variability across the site. We did have uh, limited access at the site based on its heavily wooded nature and a small amount of time. So we performed transects where we could for as long as we could. We had some boring logs that we were able to correlate the geophysical data to uh, in order to ground truth our interpretations. And ultimately we provided generalized estimates of volumes of economically viable sand deposits at the property. These are the locations where we performed resistivity transects. We did a total of 12 transects across the site. The majority of them utilized 56 electrodes at a 10 foot spacing with the dipole dipole method. And a couple of them used 28 electrodes based on uh, limited access. These are some pictures of what the site looked like. It was heavily wooded, but we were able to stretch straight lines uh, at these 12 different locations, and we incorporated GPS throughout the survey. Some examples of the results and what we're looking at here, the dashed line represents the interpreted bottom of the surface sand unit. So everything above that, we're considering economically viable sand. It is a high resistance unit. As we move below it, we're entering into both the water table and a dense clay unit. Um, and those two parameters are what are bringing the resistivity values down to the blue and green values that you see at depth. Just to give you a little better idea of what we're looking at, this is an example of one of those profiles. Again, we see the red and orange at the top. That's your sand unit. We did have some borings that we correlated the resistivity data to. The correlation was very good. What we see is as we move down into about in this location, 30 to 32 feet down, we're getting into this clay unit and out of the economically viable sand above it. And that is at this depth right here as we're getting into this blue low resistivity zone. Ultimately, we took the results from the 12 transects and we generated these contour maps what we're looking at here is basically the thickness of the sandy soils or the depth of the bottom of that sand unit across the property. Uh, we use the program Surfer to make these maps and also to generate some very, um, <clears throat> very general estimates of sand volumes at the site. We did generalize this even further because of the core sampling and came up with three zones of sand thickness, the yellow being the average 15 to 30 feet thick zone of sand across the site, the red zones being areas where potentially uh, more sand could be mined down to depths about, of about 45 feet, and then the blue areas representing zones where it seemed that the sand unit was <clears throat> thinner, uh, 2 to 15 feet thick. This was a very successful use of electrical resistivity to map geologic conditions across the site. Uh, we had excellent correlation between the soil borings and our resistivity results. Uh, we did have very coarse sampling, so we're really only looking at a, a general idea of sand thickness across the property, but it was enough to um, provide some general volume estimates and uh, we did have some visual correlation between uh, the results that we were interpreting and nearby sand mines. So just a, a very good example of how electrical resistivity can be used to map stratigraphy uh, across an undeveloped piece of land.